just, just to be fair. Everyone who's here is very lucky because um, you would get a lot of attention and extra help. Because, so we had a lot of technical difficulties and culture breaks. Um, we just did that with me. We had some technical difficulties yesterday. Many people had problems with installing a clips. So it's partly our fault. We didn't foresee it would take some time when we could have prepared that and given you more instructions. But I think most of you are now fine. Most of you are up and running with Eclipse. If anyone still does not have Scala ID Eclipse running, please let us know. And that should be priority. Everybody should be on Eclipse. Um, and it's been interesting to see the kinds of errors we have been getting. And I've been learning a lot personally as well from this experience. Um, the original plan was to have a first one hour lecture and a two hour workshop. But because we didn't have time to do the practical so much yesterday, we spent a lot of time installing Eclipse. So today I would like to start where we left off yesterday. I would like for all of us to solve this exercise together. Um, so we, we try to solve those tasks that are in the skeleton project key and day one. And then to make sure everybody understands and follows along. And then actually I, the plan was um, we were going to have an intermediate project. So, so far we're looking at sample data only, sample metadata. And then the next step would be gene expression data, conducted processing. And then finally, the final step was going to be gene expression data in the cloud, with Spark and Google Cloud. And that's what we, so we scale up everything gradually and make it bigger and bigger every day. So something like that. But now I would like to remove the intermediate step so we can catch up with the cloud. So I think tomorrow we start with cloud immediately. So, um, today, we just go through the first exercise, we make sure everybody understands Scala. And I'll tell you a bit at the end of today as well about gene expression analysis, about microarray data analysis. So you understand what kind of data we'll analyze tomorrow. And then give you a bit of code to look at as well if you're an issue so you can have free time. Um, and then tomorrow, everybody will start with cloud. So I know we spend Friday and Saturday and Sunday doing cloud based analysis. Um, and I think. Uh, at some point, we should try to form groups. Uh, I'm not sure we should maybe give a presentation or not on the final day. Maybe we will. I'm not sure yet. But at least we should form groups at some point of three people in every group. And then try to combine biologists and computer scientists and what have you. So maybe during the coffee break today, tea break, we can, we can talk about groups. And the tea break today will be 3 p.m. as yesterday. But um, because we will be working and we will be doing the lab, you can go out when you feel like it, when you want to take the break around 3 come back when you feel like it. So not necessarily everyone at the same time. You can come and go kind of as you please at that time. So, so, so we jump right into the exercise, yesterday's exercise. So I hope everybody has a clip, and I hope everybody has the gear day one project loaded. And we'll, we'll show you again how to import the project if you didn't have like, successfully imported it. Um, actually, I'll show you now. Um, is, so is there, um, is there anyone? So. We did not yet import the project. I think at least one person knew that. And anyone else who did not import the end one project into Eclipse? Can we have a show of hands? Okay, I, th I think only one person, as I understand. So just go to the file menu and then do, um, you do imports. And then on import, you select. You open general here and you select projects from folder or archive. Um, and then you navigate to the zip file or the folder where you downloaded the zip file. And then everything should be fine. Um, and Suchet and the others will help you if you have problems. Um, so that, that's just a quick reminder of that. Um, so there's a number of, of tasks in the code. I think yesterday we didn't explain clearly enough what's the structure of the tasks and what the order to solve them at. And there's a little bit of comments in the code, but not that much. So maybe it's not obvious what you should do. So today I want to explain in a little more detail what exactly she will be doing. Um, so the first task will be to parse, you, you got this metadata file, metadata.tsd, that has all the information about samples, including biological measurements. And the first task will be to, to parse the liver and kidney weights. So this, this is from the animal that was exposed to some compound, was the weight of the liver and the kidney, right in that kidney, after administering the compound and waiting for some time. So you're already parsing in the program. ID of the sample, and you're parsing the, the organ. So the ID is just a, um, uh, ID is just some uh, string that identifies the sample. Organ can be liver, kidney. Um, compound can be one of 200 compounds, for example, that's the minimum. Exposure time can be here three hours, uh, six hours, nine hours, and four hours. Those levels can be controlled in a little high. 
this will be very important later when we pair up treatment samples with control samples. So the first task is to add two more fields here, and they should be of double type. So uh, if, if you have Eclipse open and if you have this project, I encourage you to look for this function and to add two fields here right now. And then after you've done that, we should look for the read sample function, and change read sample so it can read the additional fields from the, uh, from the file. So generally a scholar, a type name, a class, will begin with capital letter, and a variable will begin with lowercase letter. But generally you use this, every next word is going to begin with a capital letter. It's called camel case, for some reason. And then we have uh, this kid in total weights. Kid in total WT. So this is the, the uh, field in the file, kid in total WT. Please call it kidney weights, again, so little k and capital W um, So I'll just show you again. So here's the code. Um, here's the, um, well, I've already done it here. So here I've got liver with double, kidney with double. So the first task is to add these two, these two fields to your, to your case class sample. So, so please do that right away if you have this file open, if you can find this class. So is everyone doing it? Did you add the videos? Have you added the Sample. So every single line of text from the file is going to be parsed by this function. So here you convert this. You have to put all these in the right order, in the same order that they're read by, by the case class. So if, if the case class, if for example, if you add liver weights and then you add kidney weights, then here you have to add comma, get field, comma, get field at the end here in this read sample function. You'll find it in the file as well. However, one caveat, um, you get this. Uh, for example, if you do this, um, and then you have something like that. So this will not work, so it looks wrong if there's a red underscore. The reason why there's a red underscore is if you, if you mouse over, you should always mouse over if you see a red underscore in clips, because it'll tell you what the errors are. It tells you found string required double. So unlike Python, Scala will not automatically convert the string to a double. You have to tell it, I want this to be a double. Does anyone have any idea how do we convert a string to a double? Can anyone guess? By sending value. Sorry? Uh, by defining as a new value. No, not much. Sorry, what's that? Type type so, so actually, actually the correct answer is to do this two double thing at the end. Two double is a function which converts a string to double. And you can do this for a lot of types. So for example, you can also do dot two n and you can do dot two car and so on. And they may or may not work. But that's the way to convert between the primitive types. And I, I didn't tell you this yesterday, so I didn't expect anyone to know it. So, so there's no, 
no harm in not knowing this. But that's where you would convert a string to a double. And that would only work if the string can be parsed. So I'll show you how that works in practice.
both the file name and the codec go into the from file function here. Then we do get lines, it gives you an iterator, not an interval, but an iterator for those now. And then we do two sequences. So we get a sequence of all the strings. It's going to be a sequence of every string on, yeah, um, we can get that. String, right? So we read all the lines in the file and it becomes a sequence of string. And that means, as usual, you can get the first line by saying lines bracket zero, lines bracket one, second line, and so on and so on. And you can change it to a set if you want to, or a map, or all kinds of things. So this is maybe the easiest the most standard way to read a file, but um, even if you use, for example, C programming, you normally read either strings or you read binary, I think. These will be the standard norms to read a file. <coughs> And then we take, we take the headers, right? So the first line of the file is the headers, because we want to figure out where is the header weight and kid talk to the weight and all these different sample ID and things. We don't want to hard code sample ID is number zero, kid talk to the weight is number 15, compounding is number six, or whatever it is. Because that will be very fragile if the file ever changes. So you want to write an algorithm that is robust to the file form of changing. Maybe some guy's going to put in an extra column in a couple of years. So th th we take all the headers. That's going to be the first line, and then we split it. And split line is just going to split it up. Um, it's just a trivial function I made. Here's split line. Maybe you can guess what this means. We just split it by using uh, the top character. The, the strings in Scala, by the way, are the same as Java strings. So this is the same as Java YouTube string of split, except the same function. So you're calling a Java function here. Um, and then we do this. This takes a little bit more explanation. So I don't know if anyone can guess this he header map line here. Can you guess what this is doing? This maybe it looks a little strange, this is with index. Do you, you don't have to know for this course really what it's doing, but can, can you guess what the purpose of zip with index can be? So you think the index for the reader? Sorry, speak up, please. It's creating the index for the record which we are reading. Right, exactly. So it's taking the index and everything. Um, what, what you get is basically, well, um, it, it's going to pair up the first item with number zero, second item with number one, the third item with number two, and then we turn it into a map, and then plus plus is for adding multiple items. So I'll just show you how that works. Um, so if I, if I go on this right, um, See what it does is it takes the index of every every element and it takes these these are tuples, they're not sequences. It's a Cartesian product. So you don't really have to remember remember this, it's not needed for this course, but we basically pair up every element with something else. And we pair it up with its position in sequence. Every sequence has different index. So you can get the position and you, and you can do something like that. And then if you do map um, plus 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 eight, right? But then we get this map that maps a to 0, B to 1, C to 2, D to 3. So let me tell you also, by the way, about ZIP in general. But if you have this, so now I'm going to ZIP two sequences. Can anyone guess what this is going to do? And by the way, think of a zipper. So a zipper going up or down. For example, an ejector, a zipper and ejector. It's going to pair up things from each side, right? So you're going to take two sequences, either side of a zipper, you unzip or you zip. And it's going to create pairs in the right order. So can you guess the output of this, this statement here? Exactly, that's right. So it's going to do this. So zip with index just means I'm going to zip it with all the possessions. And, and it doesn't need a separate sequence. It just needs one sequence to, to create this. Uh, so you can zip anything. And you can also uh, unzip it, I think, to get back the original sequences if the legs are matching up. So these are some fun things you can do. And just like yesterday, filter map and filter map. These create copies, they don't change the original, you just create new collections. So this, this is a better um, this is advanced learning, you don't need to know this. But so we did that, so then, and then, uh, after we've, we've, we've created a map of all the headers, then we can look up where is lever weight, where is sample ID, where is compound name. So we know the in, integer position in the file. And then we split every line. 
So this is saying drop the first line because the first line was the header line. So we just want to delete the lines. And then take every line out and then create one sample by invoking reader.readsample of that line. And then we yield that sample. So yield at the end of the for loop means the for loop is going to give results. Every time we get rid of the for loop, it's going to be one result at time. So, so all these things that come out from yield here, all these invocations of read sample, these will be the results that come back from this function, which promises to return a SQL sample. So that's maybe also a little advanced, so you, you don't really need to grasp this, but does that kind of make sense to two people? Or any, any questions about this? But, but that's the way that we read the samples, and then this goes to the read sample um, function, which is here, and this is the one that we are asking you to, to complete. So this will be called on every line in the file except the first. And they've already have been split by tabs, so, so you get every field of the line words. It's going to be number one, two, three, four, five. They're going to be in here. And then we have this helper field, helper method get field. Um, and get field is going to try to find whatever you're asking for by looking it up in the map we made before. So think about this if you want, but if it's too much, don't think about it too much. But just follow, follow maybe the pattern here and assume it's a string. We have to convert from string into a double. So that's the current task. Um, and then when we've done that, we will try to run it and we'll see what happens. So, uh, and there'll be a suppress. Um, so are, are people getting, getting along with this? Everybody has done it too double. Okay. So everybody, everybody should have something like get field in the uh, kidney uh, total. Like this one. Yeah. So this is probably what, what people have. I think most people have this. If you have something else, don't worry. But if you got this, this is one thing that we can expect now. Um, so now uh, let's see what's going to happen. We try to run the program. So you remember the way we run the program, we use the run menu, and then we use this run last launch, assuming you've already set it up correctly once. It's enough to, to use this method here. And then we will see what's the output. Um, and as you can see, we, we got an exception, a number forward exception. And this is because not all strings can be doubled. Some strings cannot be doubled. It turns out there are missing values in the file, and missing values are indicated by, by NA. NA means not available. So next step here is try to deal with the NA. So one strategy here, and I let people think about this for a while. I'm not going to give it to you immediately. But um, one strategy is, there's a special value called double at NAM. This is actually a double. It's a special value of double that indicates here's a missing value. So when we see NA, we should return an AM like this. Otherwise, otherwise, we should do something like um, two double. So we use two double only if only if you get this. So then the task is um, okay, going back to my slides. This is task number two to parse value C3. You, you should define this function. I think you have this function in the code already. You should take any string, which is either a value double or, it's, or it could be an A or it could be something else. Um, but you should at least deal with an A. And then you should return double NA out if you see an A. Otherwise, you should, should return the dot two double, as we've done before, to fix that exception. Um, so think about that for a little while, try to solve this. You should have enough ideas in the code to, to help you to take care of this, but we will uh, we will give you some hints if you don't if you don't manage. So uh, has anyone done this already? By the way, has anyone solved this this problem? Is there anyone who has uh, had a chance? Okay, so do you, do you know how, how to start? Does, does anyone have an idea of how to start? So probably you want to have an if statement. You should have an if probably because you have two different cases. One case is it is the NA, and the other case is it's not NA, and then you try to do it to double. So try to write the function with, with an F in it and see where you get. And just as a reminder, also by the way, um, if you don't remember how to do it, here's like um, this is the general form of an if statement, and it can also be. Both of those are, are valid ways to do it if that's how you would write it in, in your code. Of course, these uh, vertical bars are not here. They're just for the, for the shell. They're not part of the code itself. Does anyone have a draft solution that you come up with? So 
we wait for a little bit to see what people are doing. How are you doing? Yes, sir, thank you. Okay, so the collapse is not starting? No, it's Okay. So you have to go for five minutes? No, I will. So actually, this is if the first you have a string, so you have to check what a string is before you before you try to two double, because two double will throw an exception if you call it an embedded string. So first you check if the x is if x equals something something or does not equal something, then do this. Otherwise, do this. So you should begin by testing the string, and then you treat the string differently depending on what the what the value of the string is. So, do you have some idea? I think you almost had it, but you have maybe one missing point. I'm going to put it in your tent. Can you explain again what you said? Right, so... so right now. Um, I'm like thinking anything, like if I'm... Okay, so, so actually... <coughs> let, me, uh, let me write down it more clearly on, on the board with this task is, because maybe some people don't fully understand. So the value of x, in this, in this function here, this, suppose you have x, x is a string, X can take maybe the value NA. This is a string, right? A string NA. That's potentially there. Or you can take a string like maybe 3.141, or you can take a string like 1.2. And this is, let's say this is case one. And this is case two. So you have to distinguish between these two cases. And you have to treat the case differently. And then you have to return a double value. Sorry, so we directly we will first compare x to yeah. 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 then we will convert, if it is not equal, then we will convert it. Exactly, you got it, yeah. It's good solution. That's the way. So, uh, can you write that in code? <laughs> I have a problem with the syntax. Yeah. <coughs> x. So, were you able to solve the problem? Yeah, so you, you have that argument, so. Yeah. Maybe you have a, a mouse yeah, not my argument. So you have more arguments, for example, so you can check your sample because of that tree. So it's the function. So you have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it should be an ID or the <coughs> So 
it's so, you, so instead of instead of doing two double, now you are uh, now you're calling safe double on get field like this. And so that, that's kind of swapping things around a bit. on the problem has does anybody have any ideas? Have, do you have any progress on <coughs> safe double? Anyone? Do you have something? Uh, that's almost correct. Does it compile? That's a, but, but that's basically zero progress. So that is that's exactly the right solution but the sentence is wrong. Okay so I think I think some people have solved it. Should I wait longer or should, should I move on? Um, okay I, I will move on and I'll just show you the solution I think. I think people have thought about this for a while. So the simplest way to solve it, we have to check x first. You have two cases. How do we check x? So this is one way to check if x is a certain value. And it is double equals in Scala, by the way. Um, so that's how to check if something is something. And then you have to have the else case. Now, um, what should I put in the top case here? What, what's the, what, what should I put in here? Any ideas? Okay, you, what? We have to take the double NAM. Yeah, that's right. So we put, we, we put the double of NAM like this. And what do I put in here in the, in the else case? X double. X double. X two double, yes. So this, this would be a correct solution. That would, that would solve it. Um, there's one way. So I'll show you a different case. But this, this is basically, there's one correct solution. And any questions about this? This is probably clear to everyone, I think. Um, no one is confused. And I hope you can all read it in the back. So a different solution, totally different solution, is this. Um, so this is called pattern matching. And this is also an interesting feature of Scala. You can pattern match on many different kinds of things. It's a little bit like the switch statement in Java, where you have different cases. But it's more powerful than the switch. And this has the same meaning in this case as the F statement. It may be easier to read in some cases. Um, so this will be an alternative way of solving the same problem. And we, we can get back to this. But uh, the if statement is the simplest way. Um, so I will go back to uh, go back to this. this. This is the official solution. Everybody should, should write this. Or, or, or the other one, or whatever you have that works. Everybody should have some solution. And if you have the correct solution, then you should be able to run the program again. <coughs> and then you get basically no, no exception. So the program should run. And it should print something. Not as much as this, but it should, it should print something. Um, Were you able to correct? Uh, where do we have called this function? Right. Okay. Where do we call, where do we call the function? So the place to call it is in. Um, I mean, you, you can guess. I think, but um, th this is the place to call it. So you so you you used to have two double, but now instead of two double here, you call safe double. You pass in the string, and then the double comes out, and that's going to intercept the bad cases for you. That's how you put it together. Um, Did you write? 
Has anybody run this program and successfully removed the exception? You ran it. You got to have the in this context. So what, what do you think happens if I swap these two lines? You see I'm swapping them. What do you think is going to be the results? Can anyone guess what's going to be the result if I change the order here? It's not going to be correct, right? Because it's going to read the compound name and treat it as a closure time. And then you'd have a compound name like 24 hours or a compound name like 9 hours. That's not correct. However, if I do these two here, if I swap these, I get a compiler, and the compiler tells me it's a problem. So why is this being reported automatically? Can you guess why this is? Why can we detect this problem? If, if I swap in this line, then, then Eclipse can, can find it for me. But if I swap these two, Eclipse will not report the problem. Does anyone know why? Both are in string set. Yeah, that, that's right. So um, basically, because these two at the end, the, these, are, these are double types, right? They're not strings anymore. You cannot swap a string for a double, so it's protecting the order of the arguments here, to some degree, but not perfectly. If you want to protect it even more, what you should do, and what some people do, is to create new types, a separate type for the main compound, a separate time type, a separate class for those level maybe, and then you have even more protection against errors here. But this is kind of an arbitrary decision, you can't have perfect protection. But the more of this you do, then the safer you are your algorithms, and the more help you get from the compiler. That's what it means to use types well. So I think some people have run the program successfully. Please ask the helpers if you're still stuck. Um, I kind of want to move on. This is, um, this is maybe the hardest part of this exercise. Um, but I, I'll wait for people to finish what they're doing first, and then I'll explain to my boss. Yes, it was so fun. You don't have any. Let's see what is going on. We need to check your problems. 
Actually, the safe table here is not closed, so you should close it in place. So, and, and the function is also, by the way, not complete. But if you put the brace here, actually two of them, not, not just one. You close the, the match and you close that, and then you have to remove it. That's probably correct, like that. Try saving that. Don't forget the default case here. The default case is going to be uh, case underscore. Underscore means defaults. So anything that doesn't match case space uh, underscore that matches anything. So if we go get past yeah and then arrow and then <coughs> arrow has to be like that. So with an equals equals greater than like like that. And and then it's going to be x dot to double. Dot to 
sort of something up here. I don't know. I haven't seen it before. Okay, that, that should be enough for me. Uh, let's try it out. <coughs> So we're ready to kind of move on to the next exercise for people who want to spend more time on this. Okay, so I, I will start moving on. Um, so this is kind of a little bigger, so, so please pay attention if you can. Um, we're moving on to the next exercise. Um, so what we have to do now, you remember yesterday I told you about the sample structure. So for every compound you know, with TGDs, you, in, in the case of Deborah, single dose, and then you have in vivo samples. This is the structure. You have three samples for every time point, every dose point. So you have 48 samples for every compound. We have to pair them up properly in order to construct the analysis. For example, you have to pair low dose three hours to be paired with control three hours. Middle dose three hours also has to be paired with control three hours. Now with the, uh, middle dose nine hours has to be paired with control dose three hours, and so on. So the controlled samples are shared across the columns here. So we have, we have to construct this, this kind of grouping in of equity. Um, and there's a class in the file somewhere called sample group, which is intended for this purpose. But I didn't write the code to construct the sample groups. So we have to write the algorithms to, to build, build the sample groups. Um, so okay, we're going to start with that. Um, here's actually a correct solution about how we remove it. Please forget what you saw. So here, so here is sample group. Um, so we want to have, we want to construct two sequences of samples, treated samples and controlled samples. And for every copy, it's going to be for some time point and for some dose level. So for example, you would have. Okay, so say compound A, I'm going to write CMP A, this means compound A, and then uh, let's say treated 1, um, treated 2, treated 3. So this will be three treated samples, and this could be high dose, it could be 24 hours for all of them. And then it could be compound, uh, it could be, uh, let's see, control. Um, so C1, C2, C3. The three treated and three control samples control those 24 hours. So that's one possible sample group. One group can contain six samples, three treated and three control. And we have to construct all these combinations. And the controls will be shared between different sample groups. So you make many, many copies of this, but controls will sometimes be the same. But treated will always be different. So, because you can share control between different experiments. Or you could have, for example, compound B, uh, or let's, let, let, let's stick with A. So compound A, T1, T2, T3, and then C1, C2, C3. And this could be um, middle dose, 24 hours. And the controls here are going to be the same controls for both of these, for these sample groups. So you share controls across different dose levels for the same compound. Okay, so how do we how do we do that? So what we want to do, we want to, you have this um, make groups function, or if you don't have it, you, you can write this function, which is going to just make groups. And it's going to take all the samples we know about, all samples in the entire file, and it's going to construct all the possible groups. So the task is constructs all possible sample groups with treated and controlled samples. So how do we start? So we, we can use group by, obviously. We can use things like group by to construct meaningful groups. But that may not be enough by itself. And, and there are many different solutions here. But, so we will be using things like map and filter and flat map that I was discussing yesterday. Um, and in the sample, what do we have? We have actually everything we need in the sample already, because the sample now is about, um, it has the ID and the organ. So we're going to be using 
let's, let's say we use organ because actually that file also has kidney samples. We want to keep the kidney on the liver. So we have to use organ and comp compound and exposure time, um, maybe also dose level. If we group by all those for organ compound exposure time, dose level is not going to quite work because then you will get control by itself. So we want to put control and treat it together. But um, I have defined for you. Um, Here, here are some methods, group and shortening. So this is, this, these are some things you can group by. You can group by both group and both shortening. If you group by this, compound exposure time, and let's, let's say, um, I think we should put organ in there as well. Um, I think it is a mistake. But um, uh, let's see. If you group by that, it's going to be correct, except it's going to put control and treat it together. It's going to put all the different dose levels together. So then you, you will, what, you, what you'll be doing is you'll be, uh, um, in this table here, you will put um, this kind of thing. And it'll be one vector together if you group by control dose. Um, so maybe I'll just show you what I mean, just, just to make it more clear. Um, I think I should show by. Uh, I'll actually read some samples. So, uh, I'll go to the one here. So actually, you, you can copy and paste a lot of code into uh, into the Scala REPL. If you have the, this, this uh, REPL and you can copy all the statements often from Eclipse. It doesn't always work the way you expect, but um, you often very useful. So I'm going to just paste in this whole class sample here. And that means now I can create a sample like this. Um, so that's one way you can trivially create a sample if you have it in the repo. This, this will be the way to make a new one. Um, but I'm going to read the actual ones from the file. So I'm going to copy and paste even more. This is tricky, by the way, so don't necessarily try it. If you try it, you have to get everything right. Um, and then if it goes wrong, you may have to restart the whole repo. Um, I'm not going to copy the main function. You just copy pure dots. Did it find sample groups, so it's copy one sample group as well. You see this error, I didn't find sample groups, so I knew what to copy them. So I add sample group. And then we can add, um, Right, so that, that function is correct. So now I'm just going to read. Um, so you recognize this, that's the file I'm going to read from. So we'll read all the samples. Um, and now. Yeah. So now we have a secret of all the samples. Uh, it's, it's, um, we have just, just read 7,400 samples. Yeah. This can be a very powerful way of testing your code and working with it interactively if you know what you're doing. So eventually you may be doing this, but for now I think it's easy to be confused by the errors, but maybe gradually try to get into this, this habit of testing out code. But you have to define everything, of course, that the code depends on. We can't just call get samples. First, the REPL must know about everything else. But um, this is one thing you cannot do in Java. Java does not have this. But, um, This is a way, for example, to take the first 100 samples and let's do um, just like this to force it. So these are the first, let's say, 100 and the various components. So you see, this, this is what happens if a group, if a group by exposure time, and you group all the samples by exposure time, but it's not quite what we need because we need to, um, this is going to mix all the compounds in one group, so it's not that across. Okay, so, so yeah, so, so 
this is how to uh, group the Burgess compound. If we group by uh, by exposure time. If we group by um, This is a more strict group. Okay, so now you get more groups because you get all possible combinations. So now these are the keys, right? So now we have, we have groups all, all the samples by what is the exposure time and those delta. Then we get three out of control manner and then four out of control and so on and so on. But it's still, um, it's, it's not quite correct yet because the groups are too big. Um, let's say, um, I'm just doing, doing this to show you the concept to teach you how group by works. You don't have to copy this. Don't follow this. No, I'm just asking yeah. But, but so, so when, you, when you start Scala the REPL, you start Scala in one specific directory, it's going to load files relative to that location. So I was starting Scala in my workspace directory where I have GND1. So that's why I can just load from GND1 slash metadata.tsv. So you should just see the into some directory, or you can do absolute path like slash home slash my name slash something something. So, and then you can do, um, you can load a file from anywhere. So we, we can get back to that later. It's a good question. So now if I, if I group by the sample time, and let's say by compound as well. Um, so now I, I get even more, more keys, and now they look like this. So now you're grouping all the samples, 2,000 samples, in smaller partitions, more precise groups. Um, so, so we're kind of almost there. And the final solution is something like, um, yeah. So actually, I want to do um, um, This is one group I constructed. Um, it continues all at I'm trip to line, which is some compound, nine hours, and it's got this high level of control. But that's why I was able to group the samples. So from this, we want to make one sample group with low control, and with middle and control, and with high control. So there should be four dif um, three different sample groups coming out of this. So this is one, and then one with middle and control, and one with high control. So we should construct three objects. So can anyone tell me, or can anyone give me some idea? If, if this is my starting states, how can I make make three sample groups from this? Can you propose yeah, it? Yeah, then group by where this control. OK, so, we, we, so one thing we can do is we can check what is control. So um, if we give a group by control, um,
this is when I group by is controls as I suggested. Now I get all the treated and all the control together. But this is not enough by itself because how do I construct my sample group objects? So how do I pair these up with first this and then this and then this? Where do we go from here? Like I can put up low and middle. Yeah, so so how do we divide by the element? What should I do? Another thing is that I can see uh, the integer part for this, uh, I don't know what that is. It's 6, 7, and 8. By grouping, on those By grouping the 6, 7, and 8 values, I can make 3 groups. Okay, that, that's a terrible idea, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we, we should not do that. <laughs> because, because that's the, that's the kidney or the liver weight. So if we assume that liver weight is correlated by with those, then we did reverse science. Because we, we, the goal here is to figure out how, how does the sample affect the, the weights. So if we group by these weights, it's, if you work in a general case, it happens for this compound, time trip to that, that this level weight that is, is this value for this dose. But in general, it may not be. In general, there may be no relation. So the relation depends on the compound. Yeah. So it, it's better to... Um, <coughs> um, it, it's, I guess, proposal. So what I suggest is something like... Uh, you have to do group by a gap, and then you can do dose level and say, like this. Uh, oops. Oh, it's good. I'm just doing this complex printing so I can show you how you know, it's easy to read away what I'm doing. So this is can we, what we want to see. We want to see how it all middle and we want to bring this together with, with the control samples. Um, and the way that we achieved the separation was to really the group by dot 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 level like this. Um, so you have to do a couple of things. Group by and then filter is control and then group by again. So two or three different group bys. Maybe a bit of flatten and flatten up in there as well to get the final result together. Um, and, and then you should be able to construct from that um, what you want. So, for example, I've got. Um, okay. Here's uh, the vector of samples. Here's one sample. So it's head. It's a way to get the first element in the collection, by the way. Um, I defined some methods for you that like is control, and you have this group, and you have this short name. So these methods I've written in the code, you can see in the, if you check your skeleton of a short name and group to find. But they may help you with this. So if you do, for example, this group by the underscore group. Um, then it's going to be grouping by this group function, which returns this. And the definition of that in the code. That's defined here. So you can make any kind of function you want, and you can use that as a grouping key. It doesn't have doesn't have to be these predefined organ compound exposure time. You can make your own. This just control is making a string for you. Well, it can be a sequence as well. And this can be a group key. Anything can be a group key. It can even be a calculation, as long as it returns uh, discrete values, let's say. Um, okay, but so now the task is to construct this make groups function. So um, maybe we should do it all together, or maybe, do you want to try individually first for some time? See what you got? So we give you, um, also we have a tea break coming up in five minutes, so we have maybe five minutes to give, give this a try. So maybe just start trying to do it by yourself. And uh, please ask me if you don't understand the problem. And we will go through it together again. So that the 
suggest that we to be very, very uh, brief and very precious. So it's calling a method which is called take, take as a method. Oh, it's in secret. This is the first time. But for a sub or something, it may not be the final. Yeah, yeah I, I have changed my program, so I, I do more stuff. But this is this is the basic. And it's just for testing, because otherwise you get the wrong effects. But if you want to see everything, just take away. Source of from file. This is just get like I said before, just getting a text file. This is a function from skeleton and that it's called IO source. It's to create a new trip of a uh, and then we just get the lines and we need to see. And then we just do this is the kind of construct of this. Um it's the one specific part which is confusing. Okay, this is not correct uh, because you, when you use call and paste, it's for pasting scholar source. Scholar source. It's not for pasting. It's not for pasting. It has to be just. No, just the only one that's on the file. Okay. Okay. Okay, but, but just load and paste. This is not for data files. It's only for scholar source code. If you write a scholar script, then you want to load it into the repo. How many? I think the easiest way is to just start it with nothing and then um, 
go into a clip of scripts. Um, so you, you want to give all these definitions to, to that, that interpreter, almost everything. So start by maybe selecting everything, except package here, not necessarily. So just everything, everything, everything. And, make sure, and maybe make sure you have no others for the whole class to this to here. Because you had some wrong. It's not going to be fine. Okay, that's not good. So I'm going to select from here everything except read samples, everything except the actual talk. I'm not going to include the package. Switch to uh, to uh, the CRS. And then I'll paste everything. Let me try with Control B. Control Shift. So hopefully this works. It's also not right. And we maybe have to press the enter. No, no, you, you, you know, anyway, we're just defining everything from scratch here. Okay, it didn't find this um, details, but that's, that's fine, actually, I don't care about that. So now you're here, you have a sample leader, and now, you want, what you want to do, okay, we, we get these functions as well, and read samples, everything except the main function. Actually, let's get the main function as well, maybe. Um, that, that's not okay. Choose this. So we are putting these functions in here. So, so, uh, so this REPL will remember them. So now if you have, for example, sample group, right, then it's going to tap complete. And uh, uh, we, we have something that reads. Sample. I know it's funny, but, but now we can load files, like for example, main geom. Do you want? Well, I think I have a or you can type it in if you run it. Or if you just want to, um, I think what I did, I just I just call this function get samples once. So you, so you can do that. So you can just do, for example, get samples. And you type here the path to your file. And then you close. So it's going to be something like this. Whatever you have in here. It depends on where it is going. It's because it has a current directory. Right? But it can be actually directed. Huh? Yes. Good question. What is after some period? After some period, we have. Uh, so some people are maybe maybe confused with this. Um, we have. Uh, this is what's after sample group. This is how you define the method. So the convention is something type equals open bracket. So just like the function above, it's just the same as the one above it. Uh, by the way, I think we have a key break now. If, if I'm not mistaken, this is T here. So, so let's take a, take a quick break. You can stay if you want. That, so whenever you want, go and have tea and then come back and then maybe we do it casually. Um, and any questions, please just come up to me.